Amen. Amen. Joel, I'm going to ask you to stay at the piano today and just let, just softly once in a while play something, whatever hits your heart and mind. Would you do that? And have the make sure that it doesn't get where they can't hear. But take your Bibles this morning. And guys, there'll be a few verses that I want you to uh, put up on the wall after a while. And uh, we'll but take your Bibles to Psalms 144 and verse number 12. Psalms 144 and verse number 12. Again, I want to say how grateful and how thankful we are and happy that you're here. But I tell you, I'm glad God's here. Amen. And this is all about glorifying God through the lives of our daughters. And I want to just say again, uh, I got to tell you this little story how God kind of, uh, Karen's family, there's eight children, there's six boys and two girls. In my family, five boys and no girls. So when Karen and I got married, the odds of having girls was not good. So here comes baby number one, Nathan, boy. Nothing to baby number two, boy. Baby number three, boy. So we just kind of got it in our head. We're going to have a bunch of boys. Well, fourth child starts coming and go up there to the hospital. And, and uh, of course, Karen had, Karen had C-section uh, with all of them. And uh, uh, we were out in the waiting room. My dad and mom is there. And my three sons are sitting there like little dominoes. So, sober, just as sober as they can be. I and mean, they're all kind of happy because they're going to have a new brother here pretty soon. And they're all wound up about this new brother. All happy about this new brother. Going to have a new baby brother. And my dad and mom sitting over there and they're watching them. Well, pretty soon the nurse comes up the door and says, Mr. Kelly, <clears throat> Mr. Kelly said, would you like to, to, to see the new baby? And, and, and then she looked at the boys and saw them and said, would you boys like to see your new sister? And this is no joke. They got up and walked over to the little bassinet. And they all looked in. <laughs> I mean, I thought, we got a problem. We got a problem. But I want to tell you one thing. Before she ever got home, they would have died for her. I mean, they was falling in love with that little sister. And so I learned that way. One of the ways I learned that sisters are precious. As I said again, we want to recognize the value, the specialness, and to encourage you young ladies today, let you know we love you, appreciate you, uh, because of what the Bible says about daughters. I never knew in my 40 years of preaching how much God had to say about daughters. It's unbelievable. And what he says about them. And I want to challenge today, you young ladies, I'm going to preach primarily to you daughters today, and I want to challenge you to be and to live as a daughter of the King. Uh, in Psalms 144, in verse number 12, was, was going to read the, we have two or three base texts that we're going to use. It says that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, and that's a whole other subject. But I want you to look at this last part, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of the palace. What a statement. Brother Josh, it never hit me. I've read it. Lots of times. Probably could have quoted the verse to you. But it never hit me that God says he wants young ladies to be as cornerstones. I had an amazing thing happen when I went to see my mother this morning. I always go down and see her Sunday mornings before church. I was talking to her about the, the special Sunday that we're having. We don't have a lot of special Sundays here. I just don't. Every Sunday ought to be special, amen. But um, I told her about, and we was talking about this verse, and my mama stopped, and she just looked off in the space a little bit. And she said, Reggie, my mother was the spiritual cornerstone of our house. All the time I grew up, my dad, my dad never went to church. My dad was not saved till late, late in life. Just not too off long before he passed away, as I understand. She said it was my mother who made sure we went to church. It was my mother who made sure we understood how to be saved. It was my mother who made sure that uh, we knew how to pray. And she says, Reggie, I look back and she said, that Bible's right. She said, my mother was the cornerstone of faith in our home. Now, that's not to, to degrade manhood leading the home and all that. But I will tell you something. You give me a home where the mama's not lined up with God. And boy, if you think about a cornerstone for a minute. The cornerstone sets the direction of the whole thing. It is in the foundation of the whole thing. And if the cornerstone's not right, that building's not going to be right. And when God tells us that he wants our daughter, 
Is there a new baby over there? Jewel? Oh, you're just going to have a baby. You ain't here yet. I'm thinking of Whitney. Okay. Let's wait. Is there a new baby here somewhere? Oh, my goodness. They had some babies here. Show us that new baby. My, oh. <laughs> Congratulations to you. And when I think about that, a, a daughter is to grow up and be a cornerstone. Can, you, can I tell you something? The cornerstone of our country is the spiritual integrity of our mothers and our daughters and our ladies. It really is. So I want you to look at that with me. The one question and challenge that I just repeatedly want to is in scripture is this. And I found this out today in scripture that there's something that rolls all the way through. And it's this question. And this is the question I want you to ask yourselves today, ladies and young ladies. Whose daughter am I? We've put in here uh, off of Psalms where it says he speaks of the daughters of the king. And we've kind of made that our theme. But in the Bible, God asks young ladies and women over and over again, whose daughter are you? Whose daughter are you? And I want you to ask yourself, forget about me. Just act as if I weren't here. But between you and God this morning while I'm preaching, ask yourself an honest question. Whose daughter do I, am I really? I, in Genesis chapter 24, Abraham, who is a type of God the Father, sends his servant Eleazar a type of the Holy Spirit to find a bride, a picture of the church, to, uh, for his son Isaac, who is a picture of the Savior. And when, when, you know what happens when the serpent comes up there and he meets Rebecca? The first question he asks her, whose daughter are you? Whose daughter are you? That starts back in Genesis. And I want you again to ask yourself this question, whose daughter am I really? In Genesis 24, 23, there he asked her, whose daughter are you? Whose daughter art thou? In 1 Peter 3, 6, the Bible talks about women of faith, godly women, holy women of old. Do you know what God calls them? Daughters of Abraham. Daughters of faith. Women who have decided to follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to walk in that holy path of the daughters of Abraham. Real women, real daughters. I named, we named our first daughter after this woman. And you can learn so much, girls. I hope that you'll spring out of this service this special Sunday for you. And that you'll begin a, a journey to learn all the women of the Bible. What treasure. What wisdom is there. That's why the devil wants to keep you out of the book. But Hannah makes one of the most bold and astounding statements you'll ever read about a woman making in the Bible. It's in 1 Samuel 1 16 and she said to Eli the priest, count me not as a daughter of Belial. You know what was going on? If you read the whole context of the story, the Bible said that Eli knew that his sons were being immoral with the women at the door of the temple. He knew there was immorality going on and he wouldn't do anything about it. And, he, and Hannah knew that Eli was aware of this garbage going on. I preached a message on this text called Hookers in the House of God years ago. And Hannah came up there and she was so broken in spirit, she, it wasn't, she couldn't verbalize her prayer and she was praying fervently to God for a child. And Eli looks down at her and he thinks she's drunk or messed up. He's one of these, you know, daughters of Belial. And the Bible says that Hannah looked up at him and she made a declaration. Now you better get this. She said, count not by me as a daughter of Belial. You know what she was saying? With bold of affirmation and boldness of spirit and heart, she was saying, I am not a daughter of this world. I am not a daughter of the devil. I'm a daughter of the king. And I want you and everybody, and I don't care who knows it. You know something that I want to put into your heart today is a holy boldness to declare to this world who you belong to and who you are. Whose daughter are you? 
In Hebrews 11, 24, Moses says that he refused to be called, watch this, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh in the Bible is a type of Satan. His daughters may be refined. Satan's daughters may be talented. They may be beautiful and they may be educated. They may be wealthy and they may be dressed culturally. But still they're a daughter of Satan, a daughter of Pharaoh. In Ruth chapter two and verse number five, Boaz, who is a picture of Jesus Christ, he asked this all important question when he saw Ruth. Listen to it. Whose damsel are you? Boaz is a type of Christ and Christ was asking, whose girl are you? Whose damsel are you? Whose daughter are you? I'm telling you, God showed me this week, the past two or three weeks, that the most important question that a girl is ever going to answer is whose daughter am I? Who really is my father? Who is my heavenly father? Who is my spiritual father? I want you to know something unbelievable about Boaz. In chapter 2 and verse number 8, he called Ruth my daughter. Hmm. In chapter 3, four times, he calls Ruth my daughter. That gives you a total of five times. And the picture is that by grace, by grace, she was a daughter of the king. In 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse number 2, in the Christian faith, in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, all men are to address all women in this way. If they're younger than you, you're to call them a sister. If they're older than you, you call them a mother. That's biblical. I'm to address ladies in this church as a sister in Christ. That's why sometimes you girls, I'll say, hey sis, that's a short for sister, all right? But I want to tell you, ask you something. Does a sister have value? How do you want other men to treat your sister? And how would you treat your sister? You want evidence that God really loves you? That God really cares about you? He's told the men of this world, you, you call those girls, those ladies sisters or mothers. They're not just a piece of trash for you to lust after or for you to fiddle with. They're a sister to be treasured, to be valued, to be honored, to be protected. This in here knocks me out in 2 Samuel chapter 12. David had messed up bad, sinned bad with somebody's daughter. In fact, if you read the whole story, her grandpa never, never forgave David for what he did to his granddaughter. Fellas, you always want to remember that it's somebody's daughter you're messing with. I want you to see how wise God is. David had sinned, he was covering it up, he was in self-denial about it. And God sends Nathan the prophet to him. And Nathan comes to him and I can just see him walking in and saying, David, how you doing? Hello, Nathan, hadn't seen you in a long time. Good to see you. What do you need, Nathan? Well, he said, I want to tell you a story. And he began to tell him a story about a rich man who had all these sheep and stuff like that. And he had a visitor come by and he didn't take, when they were going to have Eve, they didn't take out of his flock. He said he went down to a neighbor who had one little, watch this, you lamb. You as a female sheep. And he said he took that, instead of taking out of his numbers of flocks, he went and got that little you lamb out of that man's arms and killed it. And here's the statement you want to get. And this is where the arrow started going into David's heart. He said, and it was as unto him a daughter. Did you know that David had a daughter that was raped by her own half-brother? Did you know that because of David's sin, he couldn't be the father to his daughters that he wanted to be, but he loved them? He had special clothing for his own daughters. They were king's daughters. And when Nathan said, she was to him as his own daughter, all of a sudden, God was telling David, that woman you messed with, that woman whose life you ruined, She's somebody's daughter. She's valuable. She's precious. She's not to be messed with. 
You honor her. You take care of her. God looks at daughters. God has put daughters in a very, very special place in the Bible. And I'm ashamed to say that I never saw this for 40 some years. In the book of Esther chapter 2, Mordecai is a type of Christ. He has a niece by the name of Hadassah. Esther is her other name. And Esther had lost her father and her mother in the captivity. And Mordecai was her uncle and he took her in. And the Bible said this, that he took her as his own daughter. And when they took Esther to be the wife of the king, Mordecai was down there at the gate. And he was constantly checking on the welfare of his niece. Let me just tell you something. We better start having a biblical perspective and a biblical value. These girls, you may not like this statement, girls, but you do need protection. Yeah. In every way, you need protection. You need a family who cares about you and who sees you the way God sees you. Jeremiah 46, 11, God refers to some daughters of Egypt. That's the picture of the world. In Psalms 137, he talks about daughters of Babylon. That's worse. In Psalms 19, 9 and verse number 14, and I want you to put up Isaiah chapter 3, verse number 16, boys, if you will. In Psalms 9, 14, he talks about the daughter of Zion. Now watch this carefully. In Isaiah chapter 3, as the prophet began to warn about their departure from God, he describes, watch this, what the daughters of Zion had become in chapter 3 and verse 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. Remember wanton in the Sunday school lesson this morning? Walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. You know what God's saying? They've totally departed from what womanhood ought to be before God Almighty. And he said, because of this in verse 17, he said, in that day of captivity, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon and the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers and the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings and the rings and the nose jewels and the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins and the glasses and the fine linen, the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass for those daughters who ought to have known better but because they went with the world and they got fleshly and they didn't care what God thought anymore about them, and it was all about outward appearance. God says it's going to come to pass instead of a sweet smell, there's going to be a stink. Instead of a girdle, there'll be a rent. Instead of well set hair, baldness. Instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth and a burning instead of beauty. Burning instead of beauty. That's what happens when daughters of Zion let follow the world. The way the world wants to lead them. In Psalms 144, 12, if you'll look it up, and this is where our text comes from. In Psalms 144, 12, it says, daughters ought to be cornerstones. I want you to think about this. A cornerstone daughter. A daughter who can set the path straight for her children, for her family. Who can be that solidness in the home. I'm going to tell you right now. This is honest, flat truth. Karen in our home I don't know what would have happened if it hadn't been for her being a cornerstone in our house and I want to tell you something I'll be honest I thought she was the prettiest thing I ever saw when I met her but it was not just outward beauty I just saw somebody down inside that there was somebody at home in there and she didn't act like, if I didn't like who she was, it's too bad. Go chase somebody else. And that spoke to me. The first time I ever asked her out, you know what she said to me? Listen to it, girls. I'll have to ask my daddy. I knew at that point she was under protection. I knew she had a daddy that loved her. I knew she had a daddy that cared about her. And man, what a treasure I got. I got a cornerstone. And I think you could ask any one of my six children, 
as Karen, as, as their mother helped set the direction of life in our home, I think they'd ever want to say without doubt. They'd probably say more than daddy. More solid, more stable, more straight. I brought with me something. So the Bible also says something about they'll not just be cornerstones, but the Bible said they'll be like polished in the house of God. If I was to show you this rock right here, now watch this. If I was to show you this rock right here, you'd say, well, ain't nothing too fancy about that. And do you know, really, God doesn't want you too fancy on the outside. Beware of looking too fancy on the outside. Beware of doing things that causes people to pay a lot of attention to you. You know, drawn. Let me tell you something. If a guy's not drawn to you by the inner beauty, Amen. you don't want him anyway. Amen. I want you to look at what, when God talks about, what do we mean when we say a girl or a daughter that's polished? Right here is what may be the roughness. But right here is polished. This is what cornerstones are made out of and pillars are made out of. But let me tell you what polishing really honestly does. Does it does it show a beauty? It sure does. It shows inner beauty. You see, this right here is the inner. It's what's inside you that counts. It's not the outward appearance. We need some the beauty of holiness once again in our daughters. Amen. I brought another one here too. Look at this one here. Not so pretty on the outside, right? Hey girls. Let's just be honest about it. I'm glad you want to be pretty. Okay. But this world takes it to an extreme that where it's, it's left everything about God. How many would say that's a pretty rock? Not that much, huh? If you like rocks. But I want you to look at this. Take the camera. Zoom up in on that, boys, can you? Can you zoom up on that? Inside this rough rock, not so pretty, not so attractive, but there's something beautiful down inside there. And this is what the Holy Spirit wants to do with you as you come to church and as you mature through the years. He wants to bring out the beauty of Christ within you. Polished is not so much being, being somebody walking off a walkway of Miss America concert deal. Polished in the Bible means that God, the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you what, when you wake up in the morning with your bride, you're going to want more than a pretty face. <laughs> There's a one or two amens out there on that. Psalms 45 verse 13 says this. Put that up on the wall, guys. 45 13. 45 13. The king's daughter, look at this. Now I'm asking you, whose daughter are you? The king's daughter is all glorious, tell me where? Within. Now girls, if you don't have a piece of paper and a pen, ask your daddy or your mom or your brother to get you one before, right now, quick. Find something to write on here in a little bit, all right? Because I'm going to give you something to write down. But I want you to look at this. The king's daughter is all glorious within you know this world doesn't care much for you if you're not all glorious without that's what they go for god wants to win her clothing is wrought of gold you know what that means gold speaks of deity in the bible she is clothed with the glory of god with the deity of our lord jesus christ with the inner beauty of her character all right Watch this, in 2 Corinthians 6, 18, the Bible says, wherefore come out from among them. Listen, if you want to be a daughter of the king, here's what God says you got to do. Come out from among them, who? This, the world. If you look above that, it's talking about all the stupid stuff of the world, the wickedness of the world. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. Not the preacher saith. Watch this. Not mom and daddy saith. But the Lord says, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. And God says, I will receive you and I will be a father to you 
And he says, and ye shall be my daughters, saith the Lord. God says, you want to be my daughter? You're going to have to come out from, away from some things. The great question of your life is this. Whose daughter are you this morning? Oh, I tell you what. Put up Joshua chapter 15. This is so neat. I love this. Girls, don't miss this. There's a girl. Her daddy was a pretty famous guy. His name was Caleb. And Caleb was one of those two men that made it through uh, the wilderness journey. Go up to verse 16, if you will, guys. Verse 16. Everybody get this. This is good stuff. Caleb said, He that smiteth Kerjess, Sapphira, whatever it is, and taketh it, to him I'll give Aksha, my daughter, to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him, Asher, his daughter to wife. And it came to pass as she came unto him that she moved him. How many knows that daughters can move you? <laughs> Go on, be honest, amen. It came to pass as she came in that she moved him to ask of her father. Now, girls, get this. You don't be a daughter of the king, get this. Ask of her father a field. And she lighted off her ass, and Caleb said unto us, and Caleb saw his daughter and said, What wouldst thou? He said, She's wanting something. It ain't wrong to want something. It's just want the right things. Look what she said. Go up her. Who answered? This girl answered, this daughter answered, Give me a blessing. For thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. Now I want to tell you something right now. Most girls want a new dress. Not that girl. That girl said, I see value down the road and I want that. And she says, you know what? You've given me this land, but daddy, I'd like to have that too. I want something at the start that'll take me. I want something at the finish. I want the upper and the, and the nether. I want both something that'll do me in early life and something that'll do me in later life. Let me tell you something. Daddies need to give girls something that'll help them when they're young and help them when they're old. Amen. This girl wanted a blessing. She didn't want beauty. She wanted a blessing. She knew what was valuable. Man, you talk about a, a girl that had her head on, a girl that had her heart in the right place. This girl did. By the way, that's given twice in Scripture. Go to Numbers chapter 27 and verse number 1 through 11. I'm going to introduce you to five daughters, one family. Is there any families in here with five daughters? Anybody got five daughters? There you go, one, two. They've, they've probably several. Five daughters. Here's a family in the Bible that had five girls. And these girls got something else. Now I'm going to, we're going to read this. Watch what it is. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hephthah, the son of Gilead, the son of Micah, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. Now these are descendants of Joseph, all right, way back in Genesis. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, Terza. You got these five girls. And they stood before Moses. Watch this. You're talking about daughters of the king. They stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, watch this. Our father died. They didn't have no daddy. Our father died in the wilderness. And he was not, watch this. Their daddy had left them something. Powerful. Our father died in wills. He was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord. He, those girls are referring back in the book of Numbers to when Korah and his crowd rebelled against Moses and tried to overthrow the authority of God and tried to tear the whole camp of Israel up. And they said, our daddy died in the wilderness, but he wasn't among those who tried to destroy the work of God. Their daddy left them a testimony. Do not oppose the work of God. Don't oppose the man of God. Don't oppose the things of God. Girls, I don't know. I don't know where he was when he died. I don't know how old these girls were. But he left them something. Do what's right. Stay with God. Amen. And here's these girls who couldn't say, well, my daddy's not here. I don't care. No, they took back as they could to their father. And he said, <laughs> but died in his own sin 
and had no sons. Now watch, this is cool. Our father, why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he hath no son. They didn't have any brothers. Give unto us therefore possession among the brethren of our father. Now everybody pay attention to number five. And Moses didn't answer him right then. He went and prayed about it. He said, God, these five daughters have come to me. They ain't got any brothers. Their daddy's dead. And they want a possession in the land. Oh, get this. They want, get, get. The daughter, and so he comes back in verse 7 and says, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. He said, God said they're right. These girls are right. How many knows that the first time everyone's a girl was right? <laughs> the daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them possession of inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. Now watch verse number 8. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then shall he cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. Do you girls know why that if your parents die and there's an inheritance, why you get part of it? Because God Almighty, wants, he says you're valuable and you're important. He wants you to have part of it. Don't give me this garbage about Christian, America, uh, uh, macho man, uh, that women aren't treated right. Christianity treats women better than anything in the world. God said, I want those girls to have an inheritance. Amen. Now take this to a spiritual realm, okay? But get this. And he said, then if you have no daughter, then you give his inheritance to the brethren. If you have no brother, then you should give to inheritance to his father's brethren. And if you have no, uh, and, and if his father have no brother, then you should give inheritance to his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. Watch this. These girls changed the course of history concerning the Messiah because of their faith and the foundation of faith that their daddy had laid in their hearts and they didn't let it go. Watch what happens. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. Guess what happened down the road? There's a woman by the name of Ruth came in. She had no inheritance. <laughs> she was a pagan and Boaz comes in but Boaz isn't her daddy but he calls her a daughter remember did you know what Boaz was he was the near kinsman and the reason Boaz was able to take Ruth and do what he did with that marriage is because of what those girls did back there in the book of Judges long time ago you know what because some girls stood for what was right God said those girls are right and I want that to happen. And by the way, that lineage took you straight to your Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. You think you can't have an impression on history? You can't think you can't affect eternal things? Just don't throw your faith away. See what happens. I could preach on that all day, amen. All women are somebody's daughter. How I'd love to see a return to women who are ladies effeminate yet strong and productive my heart breaks to see the crudeness that has overtaken women in America crude crass rough cuss dope drink foul language conniving manipulating rebelling, bossy, controlling of their husbands, sensual and immoral and immodest. And I want to tell you something, the devil's about destroyed womanhood in this country. He has attacked the cornerstone of our nation by attacking biblical women. I'm going to give you some D's to be a daughter of the king, write them down. Here they go. Number one, be defined, be defined as a daughter of the king. Who's defining you? When you ask yourself today the question, whose daughter am I? Ask yourself, how am I defined? 
define yourself by identity with Christ, God the Father. And I'm going to tell you this, if you're not saved, you can't do that. But if you're saved, you can identify yourself as a daughter of the king. Do not let this world identify you. This is what Daniel did. Daniel said, I'm not identifying with the world. I'm going to live for God even if I'm a captive. Don't let this world define who you are. Number two, declare who you are. Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Do what Hannah did. Count not thine daughter, of, uh, thy handmaid a daughter of Bilal. I'm not going to let this world be my, the, the defining factor and, and, and who owns me. Declare who you are. Come out clean. Don't be ashamed to be a daughter of the king. Number three, delight yourself in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So number one, be defined as a daughter of the king. Number two, declare who you are to this world. Don't be ashamed of Christ. Number three, delight yourself in the Lord. Don't delight yourself in wickedness and worldliness and sensuality and outward beauty and all that. Number four, defy Satan. You're going to have to learn how to defy Satan. Resist him and he'll flee from you. Learn as a daughter of the king to defy Satan. Do you know what Satan's out to do? He's running to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking those whom he may devour. He is lying, killing, and destroying. You're going to have to learn to defy Satan. You may have to do it on your own. Number five, be devout. Be devout. I don't agree with Catholic theology. But one time, a long time ago in, in Springfield, I heard a Catholic girl stand alone and say to a group of other young people, I'm a Catholic and I'm not going to be involved in this. And I'm going to tell you something, that girl earned my, res her, my respect for her went through the roof quick and fast. She said, I'm a Catholic and I don't have nothing to do with that. You know what she was doing? She was defying Satan and she was being devout. There's nothing wrong with you being devout. That comes from the word devotion, something which you'll die for, a deep abiding faith and practice. And it means that you're not too faced about what you're doing. Number six, be domestic, be domestic. He said, I don't like that word. Oh, the Bible said you're to be a keeper at home. Be a wife, be a mother, learn domestic skills, learn how to cook, amen. Probably save yourself doctor bills if you do that. I tell you, Karen, I, I, I remember some years after we was married, somebody in a conversation one day to me said, Karen is so domestic. And she said it in a sarcastic way. It ticked me off. It took me about five years to forgive her. But the truth about it is Karen is domestic. The first Christmas I ever met her before we was married, she made me a, 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 a flannel shirt handmade. On the sticker it said, made by Karen. Give it to me for Christmas. Flannel shirt. I love flannel shirts. It was the first one to fit me since I'd grown because it come all the way down to my hands. The sleeves weren't too short. And she made me. You know what? I said, good grief alive. You mean this woman can sew and make shirts? I don't need to buy nothing. Amen. She make everything. I hadn't been, met her very long and she came down to Selborne there to help us to Selborne. And she come down there. This great big hamburger had everything in the world on it. Cooked it, fixed it all up, brought it down. I just met her. I'm like, man, what kind of woman have I run into? She can cook and she can sew. Be domestic. I want to tell you something. Don't let this world lie to you. Those are important things. Just the other day, um, where's she at back here? Caitlin? She walks up here to Karen and I and hands us probably the most beautiful quilts you've ever seen in your life. She handmade it. You ought to see the stuff that girl does. It's unbelievable. I mean, I want to tell you, in this church, we're going to honor that kind of stuff. We're going to honor you for winning Miss Missouri. I'm sorry. Or whatever it might be. We're going to honor you for biblical skills, for having beauty in the Lord. I, I, I can't jump off this stuff. I got to keep going. But you know something? Learn to be demand. And by the way, you say, well, you mean that sits around with your hands in the sink all the time? No. I want to tell you something. Some of you girls want to learn how to work. I'm going to give you two or three, advise you two or three to come out and spend one week with my wife. She'll have a chainsaw in your hand. Yeah. You'll see what she, I've got, I've got a quarter and a half mile of pine trees when you come down our property line. She's been out the last two weeks as a weed eater. I hate weed eaters. I hate them. They make my back hurt. 
She has weed eated that whole stinking thing. Last night we were coming home. I said, man, somebody did a lot of work right there. She said, I know. <laughs> you see what I'm trying? And you go out in our yard and I'm going to tell you something. I'm just being honest with you. You come out of our place, you're going to see a pretty place. You know why you're going to see a pretty place? Because she's domestic. I mean, tell you, she fixes things up. She plants flowers over here and plants trees over here and shrubs. Are, and I'm not saying if you don't, you're not a good woman. I'm just saying she cares about where we live, how nice it is and the enjoyment of it. We go outside in the evening and sit there and I'm just loving it. Amen. I'm glad she's, I ain't going to go there. Number seven, dare. Hey girls, dare. Dare to live for God. Dare to live for God. Truly believe God for biblical things. Believe and trust God at all costs. Dare to believe God that he will bless you, that he will take care of you, that he'll be with you, that it'll pay to serve God in the end. Yes. Number eight, be discreet. Proverbs 11, 22 says, as a jewel of gold in a swine snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. Yeah. Be discreet. You say, Reggie, what's that mean? Ask your daddy. <laughs> Ask your daddy. I'll let him do the preaching for you on that, okay? Number nine, desire. As I said, have holy desires. Girls, there's nothing wrong with having desires. I'm going to say it again in church today. I said it in Sunday school class. There's not one thing wrong with you having physical desires to have a mate, girls. Just do it within the bounds of God's word. Amen. There's nothing wrong with you desiring to have a home and a husband and children. Have, have desires, but make sure they're holy desires. Number 10, dream. Dream. Don't just dream, but dream. And then put your dreams into action. Number 11, distance. A king, king's daughter should keep her distance from some things. Keep distance from the wrong people, the wrong music, the wrong places. Evil communications. I heard one of the best preachers in America say a few weeks ago that his mama pounded the verse in him. Son, evil communications corrupts good manners. I'm not talking about being proud or holier than thou. I'm talking about keep your distance from stuff that will destroy you. Number 12, be decisive. The song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. Number 13, I'm not going to go to all this stuff, but number 13 is determined. You're going to have to have some holy grit. You're going to have to have some toughness about you. So you don't fold when the pressure comes and the temptation comes. Never quit. Never give in. Never sell yourself out. You're worth more than that. Number 14, be decent. Be decent in appearance and in talk and in dress inside and not filthy and not dirty. Be decent. We want, we need American decent girls again. Number 15, dress biblically, modestly. Can I be honest with you? If you have to be told, when you're, when you're 13 years old, if you have to be told how to dress, you are not grown up. No one, not your parents, not your preacher, nobody ought to have to tell you how to dress. I'm just telling you honest truth. Number 16, get this and write it down. Distrust. Distrust everybody except God. Don't trust nobody. Are you listen to me? You say, well, I got to trust some people. I know, but be careful. I'm telling you right now. Enemies of your soul will play on your trust. Number 17, girls, make a difference. Make a difference while you're going through this journey of life. Don't just live and for fun and pleasure and that. Make a difference. Make a difference. There's women all through history, all through the Bible. They made a difference by being there, by serving God. They made a difference in this country. Number 18, dedication. Dedicate yourself to God and righteousness. This is very serious. This is no light thing. Now, I want you to go to Be Thou My Vision, Joel, if you will. Now I want you to know straight up, gun barrel straight, listen to me, look up here. I'm not done yet. I'm going to give an invitation here in a few moments. When I say dedication, dedication is no light thing. I want you to think about it. You don't move. I, don't, I'm not, I, I, I would rather not one person do anything here today and it not, if it's not real. If you don't mean it. Okay. You say, what's the invitation about? Number one, if you're not a daughter of the king, you're not saved. I invite you today to become a daughter of the king by faith in Jesus Christ's death, blood, and resurrection. The gospel that he died for you, suffered and bled, 
died in your place. Believe on him. Rose from the dead. Believe on him. Receive him as your savior. But the second invitation is this, to dedicate your life to be a king's daughter, a daughter of the king. A deeper walk with God. A deeper walk with God, a daughter of the king. I'm going to ask you in just a few moments that if your parent is here, and especially your daddy or mother, that if you feel like you know something, first of all, if I'm not saved, I'd like you to reach over and say, Dad, Mom, I'd like you to go with me. Today's the day. I want to be a daughter of the king. Second of all, if you say, I'm already saved, Brother Reggie, but I'm not dedicated to Christ. Now, I want you to know something. I'm not a, I, you may think that I don't care about you. I do. I'm going to ask you that the Holy Spirit deals with you about a deeper walk with God, a dedication. I'd like you to just reach over and tap your daddy, tap your mom, and say, Mom, Dad, I'd like you to go pray with me because today I want to dedicate myself to be a daughter of the king, to live like a daughter. See, they were daughters of Zion, but they threw it out. And I want today, if you and your parents want to come, but I want to read you something right now that God put on my heart. I, I um, it's hard for me to express, but here's what I want to read to you. My daughter, it seems the world keeps hammering at you that your life should not be anything but one big fling that without conformity to the world's sin and its fads and fashions, that your life won't amount to anything. But in your heart, daughter, remember they're lying. And even though their taunts may sting, lift up your heart in eternal praise. Because remember, daughter, you're a daughter of the King. My daughter, selling your soul for this world's attention and the pleasure and pride that it may bring will leave you only empty in pain and in sorrow while the thief flies away on a wing. Daughter, remember your worth and to his hand cling to the throne all you are to him bring. Lift up your hearts and your hands and rejoice and marvel in the truth that my daughter, you will forever be a daughter of the King. Let this dead and dying world at your virtue and modesty mock and scorn, for they will at judgment surely mourn. In faith and holy commitment, now and forever sing, God, it's all right because I'm a daughter of the King. My daughter, I know you'd love to have a husband, a home, a children, some children and a ring. But if God, if, but if in God's eternal and wise purposes, you never received those things, be sure to get grace and never forget that forever you, my daughter, will be a very special daughter of the king my daughter you're on a short journey to god's forever land and in the midst of storms and trials and temptations soar daughter i want you to rest rest in his nail scarred hand and when he leads you through darkness still sing i will not worry nor fret nor fear because forever daughter you will always be a daughter of the king and my heart is poured out to you today girls to be a daughter of the king man i'd like for you to come and sing be thou my vision 
And I'm asking right now, just where you sit in the quiet, so this time, daughter, young lady, would you reach over and say, Daddy, would you come with me? Mama, would you come with me? I want to be a daughter of the King. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm telling you, there are days of decision. There are times of holiness in life. And I don't believe God put this Sunday and this message and this truth on my heart for a waste of time. I'm asking you to reach over and say, Daddy, would you go with me? Mama, would you go with me? Would you go with me? I want to commit my life to being a daughter of the King and trusting Him with all of my life. Would you come? Would you come? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Whose daughter are you? That's all that's going to count when you leave this world. God bless you. I want to be a daughter of the King. God bless you. I'm tired of seeing our women made to think, used up like trash, thrown out on the side of the road. The very essence of their life emptied out. This world doesn't love you girls. They never have and they never will. The devil hates you. The devil hates you. He hates you. He hates you. God wants you to be a daughter of the king. Did you ever think about this? What protection? What blessing to be a daughter of the king? I'm not going to hold this much longer. If you'd like to step out, reach over to your daddy, to your mama, say, Mama, Daddy, I'd like you to go pray with me. It takes grit, doesn't it? it? Takes courage, doesn't it? it? Takes commitment, doesn't it? it? But that's what I'm asking. I'm asking you to be a daughter of the king that is not swept down by the flood of iniquity in this land. Not carried around with every wind of fad and fashion. But a daughter who will define herself with Jesus Christ. A daughter who will declare who I am to this lost and dying world. God bless you. You come on, there's still time. I'm going to tell you something about the Holy Ghost. He's dove down. The wings of the dove are fluttering over this congregation right now. But as we resist him, he'll lift. Come while there's time. Come while the Holy Spirit's dealing with you. Let this be a precious, special day. For you in your life you think i don't need god you lost your mind there's every generation needing god close to him it's this generation now probably most of you girls are going to marry a man someday let him marry a cornerstone who has been polished by the holy ghost and the word of god to see the inward beauty of jesus christ in you say i want to be a daughter of the king god bless you there god bless you come on Obey the Lord this morning. God honors obedience. God honors surrender. Lord, enable me by your grace to be a daughter of the King. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou, mine inheritance. Remember those five daughters. Remember Caleb's daughter. They wanted inheritance that lasted. They wanted something with value. Would you come? Quickly. Quickly. Don't be afraid. God bless you. Respond to the Lord today. Respond to God. God bless you. I can tell you one thing. 
You ain't never going to forget the time you went with your daddy to the altar. You ain't never going to forget the day the Holy Ghost of God spoke to your heart and called you to himself. Commitments are the things that tie you to the horns of the altar when the heart fire gets hot. Oh, dove from heaven, linger with us a little bit. Linger a little while. Would you come? Would you come? Reach over and say, Mama, go with me. Daddy, go with me. Daughters of the King. Daughters of the King. Cornerstones. Cornerstones. Could it be that God would have mercy on America because some girls decided that they're not going to be daughters of this world? I could tell you a man right now who's very prominent in American politics who may someday be a president in this nation. I can tell you something. His wife is a cornerstone. And what she says, he pays attention to and values because he knows that his wife is a daughter of the king. You will never know the influence that you may have by the commitments you make here today. People are leaving the altar. Would you come? This is your time. Daddy, Mama, go with me. I want to commit myself to being a daughter of the king. Amen. God bless you, young lady. I'm going to tell you something. It's hard for me to tell you. Hard for me to say this. I'll be 70 years old next month. Brother Lonnie, one of my greatest regrets in my life is that I didn't take more time for my daughters. That I didn't take a deeper and greater interest in my daughters. And they're all gone out of the home now. But if I had to do over again, I tell you, if God being my helper, I'd, I'd try to spend more time with them. Take a deeper interest in what they're feeling and what they're thinking and what is going on in their life. Preparing this message, I almost felt like a hypocrite. God bless you, young lady. Boy, don't let the devil rob you of a blessing today. Don't do it. Don't let him rob you. He's a thief. Young ladies, if you want to still get in on the time with God and say, I want my daddy and my mama come with me. Commit myself and dedicate myself to being a daughter of the king. By God's grace, just by God's grace. Would you come? You say, well, me and my daddy ain't getting along too good. Now be a good time to fix all that too, amen. Let me just tell you something about your daddy. If you want to know how bad a daddy can be, ask my girls. If you want to know how bad a daddy can be, I said, talk to my girls about it. But they still love me. And I'm thankful for that. There ain't no perfect daddies. I want you to listen to me. I'm not for long dragging out invitations. As long as the Holy Ghost of God wants to work here, I'm, going, I'm not going to... I'm, not, I'm going to try to be in sync with the Holy Spirit of God is all I'm trying to be. Don't miss an opportunity to let God do a great work in your heart. You know what it is? It's surrender. It's not you walking up here. It's not you kneeling down. It's the surrender in your heart when you say yes to God. That's really what it is. That's the truth. God bless you, sir. Amen. Man, that a beautiful picture. God bless you. You see what I'm saying? As long as the Holy Ghost is working, I, 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 I'm afraid to shut her down as long as God's working. I'm afraid to. God bless you. 
I'm going to tell you something. I'm not trying to be like in some other church or I'm not trying to be normal in American church, religious circles. I'm not. I, I, I tell you, I want God to do something wonderful and God something great here at this church. God bless you, young lady. Others want to come. We're not going to push. We're not going to twist. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lori. I'd like for a couple of ladies to come pray with her. She didn't have a daddy to walk up the aisle with her. All I, all I think God asks us to do is what he leads us and prompts us to do in obedience to him. I want to tell you something, I know this much, there's nothing sweeter in this world than obedience to surrender to God Almighty. Nothing sweeter, nothing better in the world than obedience and surrender to God. Can't beat it, nowhere in the world. Can't beat the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit of God working in the hearts and lives of people. I don't care where you're at. If God's dealing in your heart, Said, Daddy, Mama, come pray with me. He said, Well, did I have to do that? I'll tell you what, it won't hurt you. You need to, you need to be willing to say, I don't care what everybody thinks. I don't care what any my, my friends think. Some of you sitting there wondering what your friends will think. That's the dumbest thing you'll ever do. Shuck that off. Get rid of it. Why don't you just reach over right now and say, Daddy, go pray with me. Mama, go pray with me. Now listen, I, I, the second God tells me shut this down, I promise you, I'll hit it like a, like a sledgehammer out and out of here. I will not go on beyond the Holy Ghost, I promise you. As long as God's dealing, as long as God's working. God bless you, young lady. Amen. Thank God for some parents who aren't ashamed to get up with their daughters and come and pray. Anyone else this morning? Let's bow our heads just very quickly in reverence to the time we've had with God. I believe it's been a holy time, it's been a precious time of the visitation of the Lord. I cannot help but ask you, one last time, one last time, young lady, if God Almighty's dealt with you this morning and you felt the tug of the Holy Ghost to God to come and dedicate your life as much as you know how to do, to be a daughter of the King, would you reach out right now? Say, Daddy, Mama, come here. If things about over with, God bless you there. Amen. God bless you there. Amen. Listen, I don't know what in the world, but I tell you, there's a battle going on like nobody's business right now. There is. Pray. Saints, pray. Saints, pray. Now you listen, young ladies, I want you to know something. This church loves you. We care about you. We care about you. You are valuable and very precious to this church. And I hope in some way that it reflects the preciousness that you have in the sight of Almighty God. Someone else, come on. Are we done? All right, let's stand together. Number 374. 374, Van, come and lead if you will as we dismiss. Now here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna sing this song. Uh, I wanna sing that song with that verse that's got the inheritance in it, Van. The one that has thou my inheritance. And you can sing the first one in that one there, whichever one it is. We're gonna sing that. And I think we ought to praise God today, man. Amen. How many thankful for your daughters? Amen.
Amen. Amen. How many in this church thankful that we have daughters in this church? How many of you boys are glad there's some daughters in this church? <laughs> Say amen right there. Right. Amen. Listen, we'll go downstairs in just a minute. As you go down there, the ushers will meet you and they'll take you to your seats. If you don't have a daughter and you're just staying for it, you just wait and get your seat out there and the outside somewhere for them. Not outside, but around the center there and they'll help you, okay? And uh, when we get down there, don't eat. First, we're going to have uh, Brother Pitts is going to be asking the blessing on the food and the daughters and then begin to eat, okay? We'll, we'll, just, we'll make it work somehow or another, all right, Van? Be the first and third verse. Join me this morning. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart.